Um, and then talk about where, where you have taught or where, where you teach and where you have taught. And I know that you normally, you know, at the beginning of each of our normal things, when we introduce you, you kind of go through a list there, kind of try to give us some context for those of us that don't live in Costa Rica and haven't been there and all that stuff for, for what's, or what that, you know. What it looks like. <laughs> yeah. How, how so it looks. I have, um, like I said, I have been open to, you know, if I'm requested in a certain place. So what does that look like? That right now I'm being solicited for an interview by a lady who has a gym that's called Longev, like from longevity. Yeah. And she has specific interest in anything that people can do that will improve their, um, their quality of life yeah. as well as their length of life. Cool. Right. And so <clears throat> obviously that's, I mean, it's a no brainer of course, Tai Chi. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, but she's got a gym and it's very nice and it's all air conditioned and it's all, you know, closed in and, and it's just very, very nice. Um, I have given classes on the beach right here. Like if I threw a rock, I could hit the beach from where I'm sitting yeah. uh -huh. and, and there's a park there and they keep the grass nice and short. And so when I have students that need a makeup, because I will, I will take into consideration you know, if people need a makeup class, I'll be like, okay, we're all going to meet on the beach. And that way, you know, people in the community can also see that that's happening. I don't always give classes there regularly, but I, I do give classes on the beach occasionally when it's needed. Um, <clears throat> another guy has got a gym, he's building it right now. And so uh, we have worked together in the past and he is talking about having an area. He's like, you know, now, right now that we're building the place and, and we're about to paint, we ought to, we ought to put the big, you know, yin yang symbol there on the wall to have that, you know, offered as, as a regular class. Oh. Uh, but those, both of those gymnasiums at this point, um, they're, we're just talking about it. That's, that's not happened yet. Yep. Um, before, and even during the beginning of COVID, I was working at a gym, which is open air. So there's a big high roof with lots of ceiling fans. Um, but it was open air and that's why we were able to have classes even as COVID was happening because it was a completely open air situation and we just had everybody at social distancing and, you know, bum and nose. It was great. Um, when it I was. Like he's already developed with that in mind. Did everybody stretch your arms out? Now take another yeah. out, you know, okay, you're over there, they're over here. Yeah. Everybody's got room. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, yeah. And so then there was the, the issue with push hands, what I've done, um, depending on the person, if they express that they're not comfortable, um, I will turn my back and say, if, if you'd like to feel that, put your hands on my back. Right. And so then I'll do the energy so they can get that experience. And then other people are okay. We put on masks and we go ahead and push. Um, so then in my home, like I said, uh, my husband bought me an AC unit. He was like, if you're going to be giving classes here, you ought to have this. And then up at the farm, it's open air, but that's a higher altitude. So there's a, usually a cool breeze. Sometimes it's raining. Um, you did say rain for us, right? It is. Yes. I mean, it's partially rain for us. It's about maybe 40% of the farm that we've never touched. We've never cut a tree ever since we got it. Um, but it was already, it had already been cleared for pasture when we purchased it. Sure. Um, and so what we've done, it's essentially a reforestation project, but maybe not the way you would do it if it was really like reforestation, because it's mostly the cacao trees. Uh, but you can't, in the tropics, you can't do just monoculture because it just doesn't work that way. That's not the way the environment works here. So we've mixed it in with other things and left plenty of space between them. Okay. Um, so that's open air. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question correctly, but uh, I've got lots of different populations in lots of different locations, <laughs> essentially. So like one of the things you had written to me here was that in, Al I don't pronounce it right, Alahuela? Yeah, that's it. The, the farm is in Alahuela. It's, um, it's just like from state to state, it's a different province. Like I live in Guanacaste, the farm is actually in Alajuela, which is another province. It's the neighboring province. Okay. Um, what is Biagua de Ubla? 
Opala. I don't Agua know. de Opala is the town. It's a little agricultural town where the farm is. Okay. All right. Between between Miravalles and Tenorio, which are the two volcanoes that I referred to. Yep. And anyone you, you, who's you interested, see both these volcanoes, right? What's that? When you're on the platform there, you can see actually see these volcanoes, right? You can see Miravalles because it's in front, but you can't see Tenorio because you're on it. So if you're in so you're the on the volcano, <laughs> yeah. But you, I mean, it's down in the foothills of it. So if you're down in the foothills and you look back, you can't really see it because you're on it. Yeah. All right, Harry, we're going to be practicing on something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's like anybody... how we pushed. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be the loser here. on this one. <laughs> no, no, no. When have you ever wanted to be the loser, Harry? Come on. Well, invest in loss. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I don't think I want to make that heavy. I was going to say, sometimes though. it's fun to lose. When you lose and you're, you know, you're in, you're the now, you're the sacrifice for the day. It's not so good. Yeah, yeah. it's not sacrifice and loss. No. <laughs> so the platform is not on the rim of the volcanic pit. Okay, you guys, come on. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, yeah, but I forgot what I was going to say. We could the, fall into yeah. a vat of chocolate. That could be nice. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> We are a small batch chocolate company, though, so you would probably just stick your hand in, not fall in. All but right. uh, yeah. we could make that an immersive situation somehow. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a reality TV show. It does, of a sort. Yeah, uh, you know? Mm, maybe we're onto something. <laughs> right up the screenplay. I've got um, specific student success, health, or self-defense, et cetera. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I haven't heard of any self-defense stories at this point. Mm -hmm. I've heard a couple of people referring to saving themselves from a fall and that sort of thing. Um, so you wrote I me guess, something about a student that... Um, yeah, the one that stands out the most... Yeah. She was referred to me by a lifelong friend. Our kids had grown up together and she was this lady's boss. And I was very familiar with this person because she had worked for my friend for so long. She was always there when we were doing activities with the kids. And um, I, was, I was upset to hear that she was in such a bad shape because she's such a sweet lady. Um, she had fallen uh, and, and on her way, of course, you know, a lot of times the fall itself is not the issue so much, but she, she landed poorly on the edge of the bed and it really messed up her back. And she was in a lot of pain. Um, she could barely walk. You know how those back injuries are. <laughs> you know all about those. They affect your whole body, right? Yeah. And um, she has dogs. She likes to adopt, you know, rescue type dogs. Mm -hmm. And she's got like four of them. So she was taking them out to walk. Uh, and After I was like to take out two hounds walking four. Mm -hmm. I can't, I almost can't imagine if they're, you know, deciding now I want to go in different directions. They're a lot smaller than the ones you tend to get. But, okay. <laughs> but anyway, she was, she was out walking. They're, they're well behaved, but she was out walking the dogs and she ended up, <coughs> excuse me. She ended up uh, in the street, like, she, she couldn't continue walking, so she had to sit down in the street and she wasn't able to get back up again. Okay. She didn't fall again, but it's like the pain was so much that she had to sit down. She could not continue walking. She yeah. could not get home on her own. Some neighbors came by and helped her get home. But she was like, this is a situation from which I'm going to have a hard time, you know, getting out of it on my own. So her boss, who was my friend, referred her to me and said, I, I really need to see what I can do for this person. She's a very good friend. She's dedicated years and years to helping me in our business. So I said, sure. Yeah. Let's see what I can do for her. And I was thinking, well, I can, I can work on her with the oils and the fakong and give her some relief. But when she came over and she did that treatment, I said, you know what, there's certain things about this that I think you would benefit greatly from coming to class. <clears throat> She's like, okay, but I go to work at like eight o'clock in the morning. I was like, well, Let's meet at six and have an hour class. Then from seven to eight, you can get ready and get, get yourself to work. 
So we did that. We did that for about two months and she was progressively better, like week by week, you could see the progress. Um, and we're talking about someone who had to roll out of bed onto her knees before she was able to pull herself up. That's how much pain she was in. And at the, about the three month mark, she told me that she was so significantly better uh, that she could work all day pain-free. And she is currently doing wall squats. <laughs> yeah, wall squats are like, if you take a regular squat and go all the way down and then come up, take like double the difficulty of that easily and then you're at wall squats. So, yeah. But I think the day she did her first wall squat, it was the day, I mean, she had already been fairly pain-free for a period of time. But when she saw that she was able to do wall squat, it was like it gave her this self, this level of self-confidence that was just out of this world, you know? And so at that point she was like, I am not a sick person. I am not an injured person. I am uh, not, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, she was just leaving that chapter of her life completely behind. And from this day forward, I think if she ever has any kind of other injury or any reoccurrence of pain or whatever, that she's going to come at it with a very different attitude because she knows what she's able to do, right? Yeah. So it really, really changed her life. That's cool. Sheila, I have kind of an off the cuff question for you that you might not be able to really put your finger on, but um, I've, I've known you a long time now and I'm consistently impressed by your like over the top commitment to helping people, like in, in whatever form, like you, you always go way, way, way out of your way if there's someone who needs your help. Um, and I've always been very impressed by that. And I get the sense um, based on your journey and my experience with you and all that, that that's, that that is a big part of kind of what drives you to keep doing clear Tai Chi and to be so, you know, engaged with it and be pursuing the advanced Fagung material and all the stuff that you've talked about. And I guess my question is, do you have a sense of like where that comes from? Was there, was there a point in your life where, where that, where like that drive really took over? Was there an inciting incident where you like just made a decision that you're just going to help people for the rest of your life? Or have you just, did you just come born that way? Or where, where, where does that, where does that commitment to, to helping people come from? Yeah, that is a, that's a really good question. And it's, um, it's a, it's a good core question for me, right? Because my mission really is to empower people to understand that they can be in charge of the healing process in themselves. Right. And that came from me needing to do that for myself. And after a lot of trial and tribulation, figuring out how to make that happen, right? And when you come across something, that kind of treasure, you feel like, how, if this is possible, how come everybody doesn't know how to do this? You know, it's like, why would you not, right? It's, it's just so precious to me that I feel like I have to share. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite thing to study or learn and why um i i think all of the energies um specifically of course as has been established i enjoy the healing modality but i've come to appreciate that it's all one it's all connected like if you don't really know how to use the Tai Chi martially, you're going to have a hard time really getting that energy right, yep. you know? And I love the, the, uh, the concept of any, anything that I would do to you martially, I need to also know how to fix, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not a good healer, you shouldn't be doing that, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say discovering the new energies and learning new jings is, is, it's just a lot of fun. 
And, um, you know, each new layer lets you appreciate more and more the depth of the art and, and just the different things that we're capable of that like you probably never even considered. <laughs> yeah, that's been so really intriguing to these me. Two, um, when you're, I found that for myself, when I did it, and then for, for teaching, when people pick up a new jing and energy expression, uh, it like opens up a whole new uh, level of understanding that, that is like it might only take you to get to get your head wrapped around something pretty good, you know, one to several hours, maybe a day or two. And then you still got a lot of work to do, but now you get that concept. And as soon as you do that, it's like all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, that was like two years worth of information in that time because it changes everything. Or, or most things, it actually expands and, and gives it a new dimension that it did not have before. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Myself, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was gonna say, I really, I really enjoy that a lot. And then sometimes um, we'll learn something in a, in a completely different context. And then it's like, oh, wow, I wonder how this can be incorporated into the, the, the healing Qigong, right? So it's like, if you learn, I don't know, wave, you learn wave and the, the fighting aspect of wave and all this. And it's like, well, what if I used that, you know, for a healing session? Yeah. And then you, that's when you start really appreciating how interconnected everything is. And it's, it's just super fun. I don't know. It's, it's, I'm a lifelong learner and I just find it all very stimulating. It's fun. It's fun for me. I'm with you. Yeah. That, that is, yes. uh, it's fun for me when somebody learns something like the wave from the Martian, like, and they figure out somewhere along the way or it occurs to them like where it goes in the healing. And they're like, why don't we do any of this with any of the healing? And I'm like, go back and look at level one for the fog on level one through four. And they're like, what? That's not in there. And then I show them where it's at and they go, that wasn't in there before. I go, and that, that curriculum has not changed in like 20 years to amount to anything, right? Like there's little bitty tweaks here and there, but, but not like anything major. And, and it's like, that's been in there the whole time. You've had it there every time you've done it. You just didn't realize what it was to the level that you do now. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think, too, it's like when they say, um, <clears throat> when the student's ready, the teacher appears, that kind of thing. Um, if you see the body of work, uh, you're going to pick up on the pieces that are right for you right now. Yeah. And then at a later point in your development, when you're ready for the other pieces, then they're gonna kind of show up. It's like when you learn a new word and you start seeing it everywhere. I was like, why is everybody using this word? It's like, no, it was always there. You just didn't see it because you didn't understand it. You just jump over those parts. Like they're not really there, they're invisible to you because you're not ready for it yet, you know? So that's, that's another interesting aspect of this study because you get those complexities and things reveal themselves to you when you need them and when you're ready for them. Yes. Uh -huh. um, what is your favorite thing to teach and why? Oh, that's, that's a good question too. Uh, tai Chi, right? <laughs> because yes, because Tai Chi. <laughs> um, I, I really enjoy showing people how they can test themselves, right? So peppered into the whole system, there's all kinds of ways. Um, like... I guess the, the energy ball aspect where, you know, if you're really not feeling it, check your posture. Let's go back and look at the structure and see if you can improve that. And then, and then it's like, oh, oh, there it is. It's like, yeah, okay. So in the future, when you're about to do your Tai Chi at home by yourself, put your hands out there first and see if you don't feel it, check your structure, just like we just, you know, did during class. And so I'm, I'm empowering those people to be in charge of their own sort of quality control Yes. Right. And that's just one tiny, tiny example of all the different kinds of tests that we that we learn how to uh, verify the effectiveness of what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really like that as a method. Um, I find that Tai Chi, Tai Chi Chuen, that as you go higher and higher and higher, it all built. It's like a like a building with many stories you know 10 stories 20 stories 50 stories 100 story building and those foundation levels all do have to be very very good 
And a lot of people, I think they have an idea that, well, if I get that high level thing, I can beat all that other stuff. And it's like, you're able to get that high level thing because you have all that other stuff. And that doesn't mean you figure it out on your own because I find that the, the problem being that if somebody saw something, felt something, thought of something, they might figure out one or two or three things on their own. But there's literally uh, several thousand things. And most people, like a lot of different high level stuff, people spent as much as 20 years to half their lifetime to figure out that one thing and it was based on the other things that they had studied and what they kind of played with, interacted with. But if you did that with, let's just say it took 20 years, well, in your life, that means you get about three to 10 of them. You know, if you're, you know, if, let's say there's some overlap there, maybe even 20 of them, but you don't even get a hundred or 200 of them. And, and when you have these layered in properly because of the proper foundation building, it really, um, it stacks very well. And, becomes the higher level skill set and then at some point you just do so many of those basics automatically but at some point in your training for most of us me 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 particularly you had to put in the time and effort and the work to own that so that you could put that other thing on top of it without it being a misfit or that there was so much wrong in the beginning that it just isn't going to hold up and so absolutely here, here. Yeah, and that's that um, the roadmap paradigm for that is is super informative. And so I always like to tell my students about it, even right from the beginning, like this is the structure within which we're working, but we're on the first floor right now, you know, and you'll get glimpses of the second floor, but you got to you know, do the energy ball test and figure out if that first floor is OK, then you can start figuring out the second floor. But we got to keep going back and reviewing that, and keep improving that and. So I really enjoy that. I love it when <clears throat> the students come up with a question that shows, you know, that they're, they're getting it. And then that kind of opens the door for further discussion. That's yeah. also one of my favorite things is the, like I'll have my plan, but one of my favorite things is when a student asks a question that kind of takes us out of that plan because it's showing like the direction that they're moving in and that they're understanding. And, so I really like those kind of improv moments within the class that, that kind of stimulates me to believe that they're picking it up and they're curious and they're progressing. Yeah, yes. One of the things that I like to do for teaching is that I'll take, let's say, an energy expression and let them feel that where I'm not doing anything and in terms of the physical, but it's going on. And then they're like, well, how are you doing that? I'm like, well, or I really want to do that. Okay. Let's, you have to have the physical structure good. Well, there's physical structure issues. And they're like, well, okay, I got to have that to do that. Yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any problems with my physical structure. Or that's, see, as soon as I do a break somewhere, it's not happening now, is it? It's when my structure is correct. Then I have things going on at the next level, the G level that are correct. And now this other thing is working. But you do have to have those right, and I and I do it with the idea of trying to give them incentive to get those other things right, so that they can build into that other stuff. So yeah. yeah, and that's the fun part. Another one of the major testing grounds that we have is using the push hands for different things. You could test all kinds of stuff with it, and so sometimes when we're testing something a little more basic, I'll I'll add in another thing and see if they pick up on it, right? And so then that gives me a measure of what their sensitivity level is like, you know? But it's really nice to have those, those um, tests, whether it's with a partner or on your own, to be able to uh, measure and verify your own progress. Cool. So it may sound like the first question, like the, some of those other questions at first, but it really is kind of a different question. What is your favorite thing? And I know this changes for people from time to time as well. What is your favorite thing to practice and just to do? And why? For me, it's it's, uh, it's the Nagong set for sure. No questions, hands down. I love that set. Um, the why it just feels so darn good. It's super effective, and it's it's just uh, all the things that are said about Tai Chi happen there. You know, it's meditation in motion, it's connection, it's energy flow, it's good structure. I, would, I don't know, it's just everything to me. I love it. 
uh -huh. the next thing said is my favorite thing to do. Um, I really enjoy. <clears throat> I really enjoy discovering the new things, um, but I find a lot of comfort in the more familiar things too, you know? So even though I'm working on other sets, I, I do go back to the eight a lot. Um, it's kind you, of the, the playground for trying new things. Do you, uh, do you prefer the movement more or is it more some of the energies that you're getting to play with in there or something else? Um, I think it's the fact that I've done it enough where I can really kind of, focus on other aspects instead of thinking about the moves. Um, also because I'm working more and more on trying to, instead of just opening with the right, also opening on the left. And so if I do that with the eight, um, I think uh, because I come from a very academically oriented family situation and I've always enjoyed studying and all this kind of, and then I worked as a teacher for 15, all this stuff. I've been up in my head so much of my life that with the eight, I can really get out of my head and, and feel it, you know, and so it's easier for me to practice with the eight just because I don't have to be up here or, or yeah. you know, I don't have to process anything. It's all in here in my body. Um, and so then if I want to focus on a particular kind of energy, I can be more down, um, you know, feeling jongding and all that, not trying to intellectualize or remember or, you know, think of anything, okay. just feel it. Yeah. I know that push hands has taken a, a, a has been a thing that probably took the biggest hit during COVID and all of that. Um, how much of the push hands are, would you say you're teaching and is it dedicated class or kind of integrated into other classes and that kind of, you know, talk to us. Yeah. About. So uh, for the push hand, my classes are pretty small most of the time. And a couple of people have, fairly valid reasons for not wanting to participate. So like I said, I've, I've come up with some alternative um, sort of, how would I say, modifications, I guess, for push hands instead of being in the, you know, face to face, which is the correct way to do it. Um, I'll have them put their hands on my back to show them things so they can, they can feel into me without the face to face contact so much. Uh, I'll pepper that into every one of my classes. Okay. As far as they're, and then and then just have like I'll put my arm out and say put your hands on my arm you know I'll keep my face kind of this way and they'll put their hands on my arm and so then I'll push a little bit like that. Um, I don't have a dedicated class at this time. Um, it is on my list to have uh, meetups, <laughs> but it hasn't happened yet, unfortunately. Hopefully we'll <sighs> back in the day, right? Hopefully we will get back to a place where. People can just come together to have fun and not worry about that kind of thing. Yep. Um, I feel like we're getting there. I've got a guy that's interested in, in coming on a regular basis and it's pretty much just for push hands. Okay. Um, and then, you know, some other people that are, they're up for that. <laughs> but I haven't wanted to incorporate it as sort of an obligation to anybody at this point. Um, sure. just because of the whole, Going. the whole, uh, environment with that. Also, because like I mentioned before, a lot of my, um, patients, my patients, a lot of my, uh, students are also retired. And so they've got the secondary complications and they've come to me for the health benefits specifically. Right. Um, so if they've got things going on that would that they would be poorly impacted by catching something in my class that would make me feel terrible yeah. <laughs> right so i know a lot of that is on me of making these limitations and taking these precautions mm -hmm. um but that's just the situation we're living in right now so i hope it changes soon for many reasons yeah. <laughs> not just so i can do push hands but <laughs> yeah bargung qigong healing work um, and then I've got, I think, a couple different questions on that. By the way, anybody that wants to jump in here for anything else, uh, feel free to do that. And so the first one is, do you have um, other healing modalities, massage, Reiki, anything like that? And you were talking about pranic healing earlier, so. Yeah, so the, pran the pranic I don't really use. Um, 
because I just enjoy the Fakong more. <laughs> I find it extremely effective. Um, I have gone back about in the past year to the textbooks from the Pranic Healing just to see, you know, how they tie in, what they have in common, this sort of thing. Um, but the main healing modality I have besides the Fakong would be the essential oils. Uh, I believe that people who are in my Tai Chi class are also learning to heal themselves, perhaps not in a, yeah, they are. Direct, a direct way. Yeah. Uh, like I'm not telling them this is, you know, it, with the exception of perhaps the, uh, the electric energy for arthritis, sure. I do emphasize like specifically this is for this. Um, if they come to me for a consultation, uh, I interview them and find out, you know, what modality would be appropriate for what they're experiencing. And yeah. then um, we'll talk about all kinds of things from diet and other types of exercise to meditation. Um, but oils somehow seem to always come in <laughs> just because they're, they're really effective. And like I said, a person who's a complete novice and doesn't know how to work with energy can use an oil and get those kinds of vibrational uh, mm -hmm. benefits. And, um, and then Tai Chi always comes in. <laughs> it just always does, right? Yeah, so literally you can take somebody who's coming in and feel that their energy is a certain way, work on them with the fog and so that you can feel that now their energy's got a different vibration to it. Make sure that when they're doing the Tai Chi, that that's the flavor they're working with. That's the type of energy they're working with. And they give them an essential oil that basically promotes that particular energy type, that expression, so that it's all taking them into that place long enough to get a different outcome, to, to get a more right. beneficial outcome. Yeah. That's, uh, and usually I will, I will, you know, use the Fagong diagnostic and do the energy healing and then show them, like, do you feel this? Do you, do you understand where I'm at in you? And so then, you know, when you're using this oil, I want you to remember this feeling. And so then they're, they're learning basically how to open that meridian and the oil besides vibrationally working, it's also an olfactory and memory uh, trigger to bring that sensation back to them so that they feel and do <clears throat> because I think there's a lot of sort of victimization. There's a, there's a, there's an overall helplessness that stops a lot of people these days because we're used to handing over our power. <coughs> more, more so now than, than most of modern society has felt in a long time. Yeah. Yep. So giving people tools to heal themselves is just, it's thrilling to me. Cool. Um, do you keep dedicated Fagong Qigong healing hours? And if not, then how do you work for doing your Qigong work? Yes, um, <clears throat> from two to five on Tuesdays and Thursdays is my uh, set time. Yeah, and then if somebody has a particular necessity, then um, you know I just look at my schedule and see what I can work it in. Uh, and I'm, I'm doing the long distance as well as in person, mm -hmm. in which case I'm, de I'm depending entirely on the Falcon, right? Because I can't do any yeah. kind of physical thing with them. Um, <clears throat> so that's just on a, on a need, <clears throat> on a need to uh, schedule basis. Yeah. Well, I like it for like what we, like what the, the ones that I've worked with for the, for the, if they've got COVID, because then I don't have to be in the room with the person having the COVID. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even, and I've even done it to where, I mean, mostly I'm kind of using the distance uh, method, even if I am in person with them, uh, because they'll, they'll come in and be on the table face down <clears throat> for the oil application on their back. So there's not a lot of face to face. Yep. And then I'll step away from them and do the, the fogong from a distance of two or three yards, you know? Yeah. So, um, even though we're in the room together, it's not like I'm up in their way she field. I'm actually standing back. Yeah, I get it. Cool. 
What are the top three most memorable Tai Chi moments in your life? Seen, done, felt, or experienced? Wow. Yeah. And then you don't, you're not limited to three, but, but is there like several that kind of, any that stand out? Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. Um, and, and most have been with you. <laughs> I guess, um, Yeah, boy, there's a lot. Let's see. When my father was ill, my father, um, he had Alzheimer's. So my mother described that once as a long goodbye, right? It's, it's so long. <laughs> he needed a lot of help and I live pretty far away. So I was traveling a lot. I was exhausted all the time, you know, emotionally as well as physically. And, um, that whole episode of my life, I feel like that doing the Tai Chi forms just saved my life. And it allowed me to be available and, you know, helpful because I could go and recharge and then come back, you know, and still be good. Um, some of my family members were just, you know, chronically exhausted. So when I would go visit, I would be like, okay, I'm in charge. You go take a break. You need to, you know, go off and do your thing. But, you know, I also had to take care of myself. So using Tai Chi as, as a support during that period was hugely important to me. And I learned a lot. Right. Um, <clears throat> so that just as kind of a period in my life in which it was extremely significant. Um, there was an occasion, I can't remember which workshop it was. I want to say it was my push hands, which was just my second workshop with you. We had gone out to dinner and we were, it was one of those situations and everybody on this call knows what I'm talking about. After dinner, standing in the parking lot, having a conversation. I don't know if it was midnight or one or two, but it was, it was, it had been a long day, but it was all, I mean, nobody was tired because it was just very intriguing. And, you know, when you do Tai Chi all day long, you don't need to sleep, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and we were all standing in a circle. We were talking about different methods of training and their, the benefits or the drawbacks to, to different schools of thought and different styles and all this kind of thing. And um, I don't remember really how it came up, but you kind of made a little bit of a sort of offhand gesture. And I was standing right next to you on your left and you, this gesture you made like to the right and everybody kind of went, whoa. And then it got to me and I was like, oh my God, right? It was, like, oh, that blew my mind because you hadn't touched anybody and the whole circle moved, right? And so, and being my second workshop only, I was, that was just like, I had this no, before COVID. I had, yes. Yeah. And I had no idea that it could go there. Uh -huh. That was, it was a very kind of split second thing but I'll never forget it. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh -huh. And even in the first workshop that we went to, I think we had gone out to dinner on the very first night. And I had explained something to you about the situation with my father's death and then some subsequent things. Uh, we had his memorial about six weeks after he had passed. And so that involved a trip back and so this is you you live in Costa Rica and they were in Washington state correct yeah yes. up Seattle up towards Seattle better. yeah Tacoma right so i took my husband and my kids and i even picked up my niece and nephew i had this great big huge vehicle i was the one in charge right driving everywhere all the luggage all the travel and then additionally i was of course in mourning as a daughter but i was also there for my mother right and then all of her family came in. So I was also being a niece. And I, anyway, it was just, it was, it was a lot. And um, <clears throat> at that time, my son was working for the airline. So I got to fly standby. My mother actually fell and broke her wrist during that, like right after the memorial ceremony. And so I said, okay, everybody, y'all just go ahead and go home. And I'm going to stay for a few more days. And, you know, because my mom kind of gets depressed when everybody leaves. So I stayed 
And um, when it was time for me to leave, I went to the airport and I was very tense, obviously, with this whole situation. I was very tense. And, um, and the plane was full. Oh. And that plane was leaving like at 1130 at night. And the next one was like at six o'clock in the morning. So I was like, I can't leave because for six o'clock flight, I'd have to be back by three because it's an international flight yeah. and it's already midnight. So I essentially had to find a place to rest because you don't really sleep. But I was, I was in the airport at night. You know, there were no more flights. There was some guy vacuuming. I'll never forget that guy. He was vacuuming while I was trying to rest. Uh, uh, and I was uh, like, it was so awful. It was so awful. And I was just like worse and worse and worse. And I ended up with uh, a herniated disc in my cervical vertebrae. So um, I had done some work. Of course, I already knew how to do Tai Chi. So I was doing some work with it, but I didn't know anything compared to what I know now to be able to kind of, you know, work that out on my own or fix something before it got too bad, whatever it got, yeah. it got pretty bad. And so that was one of my motivations for going. I had actually signed up for the Fogong for the spring. And then I couldn't come because they called and said, you know, your father's going downhill. So instead of going to that Fogong, I went to visit him. And then he passed. And so I came to the next one, which was in November. Okay. And I was still suffering quite a bit from that. It had been three or four months. <clears throat> so I explained it to you, we were at dinner and you just kind of put your hand on my arm and then something shifted inside. And I was like, what just happened? It was a huge relief. And later, I think it was the second or third day we did this, um, drawing back the curtains at the chakras. Yeah. Yeah. Open up the energy centers. Yeah. And when I got to the throat level, I literally heard a sound like Velcro. Yeah. And so whatever you had shifted in there, like for, like got further um, shifted adjusted. to where to just right to where it needed to be. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Like, and the rest is history. Cause I was like, okay, this is, this is it. That's the thing right there. Excellent. Uh, so goals is what we're going to get into now. And the first one is what is your two to five year goal with Tai Chi? Right. So on a personal level, it's, you know, it's always up and up and up. Right. <laughs> I just want to get better and better and improve um, more specifically. I'm working in the, the sec, the, level two modules. Um, I haven't really gotten into it, but I'd like to learn the 48. Yeah, come on, the intermediate. Yeah, the intermediate. And the intermediate level, yeah. <clears throat> on, on a business level, because like I said, being an entrepreneur really is part of my personal development. Um, I want to be able to reach more people. I would like to have uh, some some support group, I guess I could say. I would like to have assistant teachers, perhaps someone to help with administrative this kind of thing. So just growth within my school, both with more students and with, you know, a, like a core team, I guess I could call them. Um, and that's both kind of a medium and long-term uh, goal. Um, and yeah, just to increase my, to cr increase my abilities, um, it's, it's, uh, it's an urgent <laughs> goal, but I, I would call this short term, but it's going to be going on forever to, to really be doing 24 seven. Um, I wish that it happened like 20 years ago, but I'm, I'm still working on it. I don't always get through the night. <laughs> I would say I, I I'm, I'm, I'm hitting maybe between 10 and 12 hours, uh, sporadically oh, that's um, so that's and something i'm working on part of the 24 7 for sleep is so what is it you're practicing while you're sleep sleeping <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> yeah. So, yeah yeah and i love incorporating technology into all these kinds of things so it's like if i'm taking my blood pressure in the morning and i've got a sleep app 
and I could see, you know, how much time did I spend in deep sleep? Um, I just, I enjoy as a scientist, I, I like having those data available to see uh, what kind of real progress is going on. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, what are your long-term goals regarding Tai Chi? Yeah, long-term would be to, to be my best self, you know, and to live my best life and to share that with as many people as are interested. Yes. That's a little, that's a little ask, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And I don't, I don't put specific numbers on that. Like I want to be, I want to live to be 115. I mean, if it happened, that'd be great, but only if I'm enjoying myself and still useful to people, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You might be, that's, that's one of the things for Tai Chi too, is that, uh, you know, you might be, you might be old and alive for 20, 30 years. How do you want to feel during those 20 or 30 years? It's a, it's, it's, it might not seem important if you're not having those issues now, but it'll seem real important if that's, you know, if you've been in that for a while, it, it makes a difference. Yeah. Well, like I said, I've, I've been having old lady stuff since I was about 14. So <laughs> I got, I got my bone density measured when I was about 35 and they were said, Hey, you have the bones of an 80 year old. I was like, well, thank you for that. You know, <laughs> and a lot of the issues I was experiencing at that time are they're no longer an issue. And I, Definitely, de I definitely give Tai Chi all the credit for that, you know. Obviously, I've made dietary changes and this and that. And, you know, of course, your attitude makes a big difference, especially if you have pain. But uh, a lot of those changes have been possible through the things I've learned with Tai Chi. And so it's, it's huge for me. I'm with you. Hey, hey Sheila. Yes. Have you had your bone density checked again? No, I've been wanting to do that just out of curiosity. I haven't gone because I, I feel like I don't have those issues anymore, but I, I should do that. Yeah, for sure. That would, that would be interested. Yeah. 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 I agree. Cool. Um, only two more questions and then, and then we're done for the day. And so the first one is they're both about clear Tai Chi and you. What about clear Tai Chi is the most appealing to you? Um, I think I've, I've touched on it um, already, but just to sort of, um, <clears throat> to review, oh, just a sec. <coughs> the, um, <coughs> sorry, a lot of talking today. <coughs> um, <clears throat> The way, the way we have methods to test ourselves is hugely, hugely important. And the fact that there's healing that goes along with everything. The fact that um, <clears throat> the, there, there are martial applications for everything. The martial applications are not always emphasized in other systems. And um, I think it really informs your structure and your energy to be able to do those. So... I really like that those are included, um, but mostly because I like to use those energies for healing, <laughs> but it's all, it's all one thing together. So uh, the, the support group also, I think this is an excellent group of people, you know, I love being a member here and <clears throat> what else can I say? It's just, it's accessible. It's accessible and it's super significant. It's all authentic. I, I, I can't say enough good stuff. I, I <laughs> Why is this the path for you to achieve your goals? I think because it allows me to be part of something bigger and <clears throat> And that thing allows me to be the best me I can be, right? So there's a lot of me's in that. But if the purpose of this individual is to help others, it, it ends up being a ripple effect. So by me participating in Clear Tai Chi, I'm affecting my whole community. And I, I think that that's priceless. Yeah, I agree. Cool. All right. Well. Um, anybody, anything else you wanted to add or ask or say or anything? It was a good interview and I like what 
she was saying her experiences and how she relates to other people. It was all very impressive. Thank you. Thanks, Art. Yeah, and I would just like to shout out, Art, Art's been a really great partner for me. We've been working a lot together and I appreciate his time. And Harry, the first time we did a long distance connection, I think I didn't sleep for two days. That was so amazing. It really uh, changed my life. Yeah, yeah, same happened to me. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. So I really appreciate everybody in this community. Um, and the other thing that didn't really come up that I, sh I probably should have talked about in my short-term goals is that um, your first book was so significant to me. I don't know how many times I've read it. Um, I didn't even know a test existed for that. And you said, would you like to test for that? I hadn't studied or anything, but I was like, yeah, of course. You know, <laughs> and, I, and it was like, it, that was not a problem for me to take that test without preparing because I had been preparing without knowing it. Um, I'm talking about the Chi Energy book. Yeah, yeah, the Chi Energy book. And um, just so that anybody who's stuck with listening to all this about me, which I don't, <laughs> I'm usually not all about me. So this has been kind of an interesting experience yeah, for me as well. Um, uh, <clears throat> that, I that book, you. <laughs> no, thank you. That, that book will be available in Spanish. I'm doing a translation. So um, if that's useful for any of you guys in your teaching, uh, I know for sure it will be for me. I give out that book to every student. Every time I get a new student, the book is part of the deal. And so obviously with students who speak Spanish, it was necessary to do the translation, but I hope that that work will be useful for, you know, a broader audience and more people because that book is, is it's a great way to get into it and it teaches you a lot. It's a great reference. I just love it. Thank you. Cool. Anybody, anything else? All right. Uh, one last uh, shameless sponsors promotion there. Matt, I'm going to let you do the honors. It's on the Clear Tai Chi Level 1 and then the gathering that happens every year in June. He's got a... Yeah. Well, um... Yeah, so I mean, uh, we we did talk. Uh, well, well, thank talks. you, Sheila. Again, this is great. Oh, it's my honor. What thank happened? you. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, my screen glitched out there for a second, but I caught the gist of that. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, and it's great to to hear more about Sheila. Like I said, you know, I've gotten to know her over the years, and she's just just a wonderful human being and a dedicated teacher. Um, and, uh, and I know she touched on how she got some of the skills that she's got now. And a lot of that comes from the level one program. Um, you know, some of that she got uh, in other places as well. I and, mean, you know, like she said, it kind of all fits together at a certain point. But, um, if, you know, if, if you have to start somewhere and you're curious about queer Tai Chi and you want to get a real feel for what is possible with the curriculum and the method and what's, uh, you know, kind of the building blocks of the system, you're going to want to check out queer Tai Chi level one. Um, and there are a number of other courses available at clearmartialarts.com. Um, you know, so if you're interested in, in what we're talking about and it doesn't sound like level one is for you, go check it out, go check out clearmartialarts.com anyway. Um, but for those whose curiosity has kind of been piqued and you want to see more about what clear Tai Chi involves and what you can do kind of right away, all the really best like solo training to kick things off in our system is available in the level one program. Um, and as Sifu said, that's available both by DVD and as an online course. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it online. Um, and so there's a lot of options there for you for what best fits your lifestyle and your device usage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but go check it all out at clearmartialarts.com. Um, and then the other thing, obviously, is that those of us who are on the call here today, those of us asking Sheila questions and Sheila herself, um, we all were at the Tai Chi Family Gathering in 2022, which was an amazing experience. And we're looking forward to making it even bigger and better in 2023. Um, by the time you see this recording, we will have an event page up for that. It may be a little bit sparse. We're gonna be adding things as we go, but we are very firm on the dates and the locations and we're getting things set up 
right out of the gate already for next year. So um, uh, if you want to see the regional organizers, including the amazing Sheila Bell, Sheila D. Bell, in, um, in person, live and in person, and get some hands-on experience with them and uh, be able to, you know, talk face-to-face, the Tai Chi Family Gathering, the Clear Tai Chi Family Gathering is the event for that. Um, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a blast again in 2023, I'm sure. And so you can find out more about that at TaiChiGathering.com. Um, and so if you want to get started in something right away, uh, go to ClearMartialArts.com. Um, and you can probably actually find the event page there as well. But, um, but if you're really just looking forward to like getting in front of a bunch of these great people, including the amazing Sheila D. Bell, uh, go to TaiChiGathering.com and see what we've got for you there. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you. Um, great talk today. Thank you so much, Sheila. And thank you for the rest of you that helped contribute to the conversation and all that. And we'll stay on and talk a little bit after um, we end our call. Have a, if, I, if you're leaving now, have a great weekend and, and week. If I don't talk to you before next Friday, um, I love you all and look forward to interacting with you all more.